Hello everyone, Gilly here. In the last video I made, I solved days one and two of 2019 Advent of Code in OCaml, just to try the language out. Uh, earlier today, I solved day three, and I thought the process was really fun. So I decided I'd make a video showing roughly what the process was like. Um, I started making a video of the actual process itself, but I got stuck working on preprocessors and getting my build tools set up correctly to actually build everything. So I decided to make this video after the fact, kind of showing the overall process. Um, nothing too crazy, but it was just kind of a lot of fun. So on day three, we are looking for crossed wires. So we're given these instructions which show how wires trace across a board. And at some points they intersect. So if you look here, we have right 75. That means the wire goes to the right 75 units of measurement, then it goes down 30 units of measurement, then it goes right, then it goes up, then it goes left, so on and so forth. Here's another wire right here. And basically for part one, we are told that they intersect and that there is a closest intersection to the origin or the starting point, and we ought to find that. So it actually specifically wants to know what the distance is from the origin or the starting point to the intersection. So it's using the Manhattan distance, which if you're not familiar with it, it's basically kind of like the square distance. Um, it popped up a lot in Advent of Code 2018 especially. So you can think of it kind of as being just the wall of a rectangle, the walls of a rectangle that get you to the point. So you can go up into the, if the point were to the right and up, you could go up and to the right, or you could go right and then up, or you could take a zigzag, but it should all end up being the same amount in the end. So let's go ahead and let's just get hacking on this. So the puzzle input is two wires. Here they are. I'm just going to take those and I'm going to copy them into my OCaml file. I'm just going to keep using the same file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that instead of parsing these, which can be a little laborious at times, I'm going to make it so that they're valid OCaml code. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let wire one equal a list of values. And I'm going to say let wire two equal a list of values. And really what I want here is I want there to be a new type called wire. And this new type is really going to be a list of directions. And really direction is kind of a misnomer, but I'm going to roll with it. But basically what a direction looks like is it's either left of an int, or right of an int, or up of an int, or down of an int. Now, I'm sure you astute viewers will realize that I'm using the same characters that the actual input's using here. So that's gonna make parsing a lot easier. So to actually make this valid OCaml, well, it's pretty straightforward. We basically just take the values here and we replace all of the commas with semicolons because that's the separator OCaml uses. And then we can just kind of do a little bit of finagling to change R to R space globally to change, to do the same thing basically for U. It's a little slow, but it works. Do the same thing for D. And then last but not least, do the same thing for L. So there we go. These are almost valid OCaml structures. Basically all we need now is we need to go ahead and just take these and stick them inside of these lists. And there we go, we have valid OCaml structures. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these values and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert them into sets and then I'm gonna find the intersection of those sets and then I'm just gonna find the minimum of the intersection where the distance is minimized. So I'm gonna be continuing to use this base library that Jane Street provides. It's a really nice library. It was a source of a couple of woes earlier um, but I'll talk through those shortly. And really, they aren't woes. They were just kind of my unfamiliarity with OCaml more than anything else. So I'm going to create a new function. It's going to be called 
um, wire to points. So it's going to take in a wire. Type wire. And what it's going to return back is it's going to return back a hash set. The decision to use a hash set here is potentially a bit arbitrary. I could have just used a normal set. And in some ways it would have made my life easier. Um, I'm using a hash set mainly because I didn't have an easy one to use in Haskell for most of my time. So I kind of wanted to get used to the mutation patterns here. Um, normal sets don't really use mutation as much. They return new sets with uh, nodes inserted into a tree. They're kind of just a discriminated union under the hood. Um, but anyways, that is to say, I'm going to need a new type here. Point dot T. <laughs> That's hilarious when that happens. I don't know what I'm typing in my editor to make that happen, but sometimes it'll just randomly duplicate out a million values. Um, so right now I'm just going to fail with to do. But basically what I need is I need a new type and I'm going to say module point equals struct and and then type t equals and these points are just going to be an x y pair so x is going to be an int y is going to be an int and this is where it gets interesting so to actually make a hash set out of these you have to implement certain members and I could implement these directly on the struct right here, but there's kind of a lot of just boilerplate that goes along with that. I have to implement something to convert it to an S expression so that it can be represented uh, kind of canonically as an S expression. I have to make something that can make it so that it's hashable, so that it can be hashed into a key. And then I have to implement something that is comparable so that if there was a collision while hashing, the collision would get resolved correctly. Um, on lookup or insertion, what have you. So instead of doing all of that, I decided to try to find if there's an automatic way. And there was, it's this deriving, deriving, I think it was, deriving pragma. I don't even know if that's the right term, but basically this is a preprocessor directive saying, hey, preprocessing tool, go ahead and add a bunch of code in here that does these things for me. So what do I actually want this to look like? Well, I want this to derive whatever I need to actually make this work. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm actually just gonna return hash set dot, I need to find the right thing. I can't remember if it's dot create or dot empty. Um, dot empty will probably do. Let's see, create. Oh, there is create, okay. Um, yeah, okay, that'll work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dot create and you can pass the module down. And this is kind of like instantiating the generic, so to speak. It's not exactly the right way to say it. I'm sure that someone who knows potato, I'm sure that someone will know, who knows OCaml, polymorphic, will kind of scowl a little bit at, th at that explanation. But, you know, I'm a noob, so I can hopefully get away with making a couple little mistakes. So, okay. Um, module expert not given, but expected. So something's wrong. Um, hmm. What did I actually do wrong here? Point T. Type equals T. Type T equals module point equals struct end. Everything about this I thought was correct. I'm making a little mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, OCaml. I found this maps and sets, real world OCaml book that I think folks from Jane Street actually wrote. And this is kind of where I got the ideas from. So there's this deriving section, module. Okay, there we go. So type T, that looks similar to what I'm trying to do. Um, create module book. Interesting. Oh, right. You just talk about the name of the module to reference it. You don't talk about dot T. That makes sense. Um, so direction wire. That should be a direction list. I don't know why I said direction wire. 
Um, okay, so there we go. So now it's whining that I need to implement those three things I said I needed to implement. So I should be able to actually use this deriving that I mentioned here. And these are the things I need right here. So I'm just gonna actually copy those and paste them. But basically that'll implement all the members that I actually need to make this thing hashable. Okay, that's good. So I have an unused variable. So what I'm gonna do is just to start, I'm gonna say let points equal this in all right, and then what we're gonna do is we're just going to add a new function here, a new auxiliary function called let rec accumulate points, which is going to take in a current point, and it's going to take in um, a direction, uh, specifically actually a list of directions that we're stepping. So I'm actually going to use a shorthand here, equals function, which basically says I take another argument and I'm just going to immediately pattern match on it. This is something I used to do in F sharp a lot and it turns out it's a normal ML kind of thing. So it works here too. Um, but here we go. So if I have an up of V with more values or and I like this, uh, just like in F sharp, I can do multiple patches or multiple cases that fall into each other. Up, down, left, right, where V is less than or equal to zero. Sorry, this is when. When V is less than or equal to zero, what I can do is I can accumulate points. I'm just gonna not care. I'm gonna continue forward because I've gotten to a case where I'm not stepping in a meaningful way. Um, the less than zero is a little ambiguous. It's not really a case I should hit. I'm doing this more to make sure I have good coverage and don't create an infinite recursion. Um, so it's not the greatest thing in the world, but basically I'm gonna recurse just passing down point and passing down the rest of the wire. So if we ever get down to a zero, we're gonna recurse passing the rest of the points. Otherwise, we have some amount, some direction, and then we have some wire. And what do we want to do in this case? So we can say let in. And what we want to do is we want to basically take a step and I'm going to define that like so. So step direction. Um, actually, I'll take direction as the last argument. Take direction on point. So from this point, step in this direction, single step. So we're doing one step at a time, building sets up of all of the points we step over. Um, and then what this is gonna return is this is gonna return a new point and a new direction. So basically, if the direction was eight steps to the right, when we take one step, we only have to take seven, seven more steps to the right. Um, if we take a point, a step to the right, that just increments X to the side. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to, in, in our points, we're gonna add this new point. So I always forget, is it add? Yes, it's add uh, the collection and then the value. So hash set dot add. The collection is points. The value is point prime because we don't actually add the origin. If we added the origin, then we would always intersect at the origin and we don't count that as being an intersection kind of by the problem's description. That would be the answer. The answer would just be zero. Um, and then what we do is we accumulate points. So we recurse and we actually want to call this with our new point and we want to call it with our new direction. So again, this could be from eight to seven cons on to the remainder of the points we have yet to visit. Okay. So our actual call here, oh, I guess there's more to do here. Um, if we get an empty list, we want to do nothing. And we can indicate that with a unit. So again, this is all mutation. This is just mutating the points value until we get the correct answer we're looking for, the set. So we can throw an in here because we've finished our lat definition. And then what we want to do is we want to just accumulate points. And our starting point is origin, so x equals zero y equals zero. And then we have, and you know what, you can actually 
this is something I do like to do. I'm gonna do this. I didn't do this originally, but I like to do this. I'm gonna actually make a value here. Let, I don't know if this is right, but we'll give it a try. So I should now be able to say something like that. If that's not right, I'll undo it and just inline it. Um, figure that out later. And then we need to actually take our wire, it's the next argument. Okay, and then what we need to return is we just need to return points. And that should be all we need to do here. Now, to make this complete, we've got to um, define our step function. Step is a pretty straightforward function. It's gonna be taking our point. It's gonna be taking a direction, which again, we'll just use this handy dandy syntax to deal with. And our directions look similar to this, though not exactly the same. So what are we actually gonna do here? Well, um, I actually wanna do something a little weird. I actually wanna say x, y as point, and then this has type point.t. This will just give me kind of the maximum amount of names that I care to have um, in scope because it'll just make things a little bit easier in a second. You'll kind of see what I mean in a moment. So this has to return back, looking how we used it, it has to return back a tuple with a new point and a new direction. So the new direction is actually gonna be pretty simple. I guess I did the direction as the second argument. Um, U, V minus one as the new direction. And I'm actually going to take that and copy it for all these cases because it's the same thing, um, except the constructor changes. And we could be a little more clever here and like return option and drop it out if it gets to zero, but I'm handling that elsewhere. So how do the actual points work? Well, it doesn't actually matter. Um, one thing I've noticed when I solve these problems is that sometimes uh, positive means south or, or down on the grid, but sometimes positive means up on the grid, depending on how I'm kind of feeling. Um, so long as it's consistent, it doesn't actually matter how we do that. So this is where our aliases we defined above come into play. So I should be able to say point with, and this is some nice record updating syntax. So if we go up, I'm just gonna say uh, y equals y plus one. So if you're not familiar with all this, uh, I'm taking my point record, I'm modifying a key inside of it. So X stays the same, that's the key. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> These are also called record puns, so no double pun intended there. Um, but Y is the field that I'm changing and I'm changing it to be old Y plus one and old Y comes from right here. So up, down, uh, down is gonna be negative and that has to affect the Y. Um, left is gonna affect the X, so I've gotta do this. And we'll just say that's negative and then we'll say this is positive. So right is positive. I think that makes some degree of sense. The up, down might not, I don't know. It kind of depends how you're looking at it. It's all kind of a frame of reference problem, really. Um, and so long as you're consistent, like I said, it, it should work out in the end. Um, you know, your ups and downs corresponding with Y, your lefts and right corresponding with X, um, and nothing, you know, contradicting anything else. Um, you know, like if the, both of these were plus, it would contradict, for example, because left and right would mean the same thing, which isn't good. Um, but anyways, that's that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and compile this and see how I'm doing so far. Okay, so so far so good. And then next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say let points one equal, and then I already forgot what this is called, wire to points, wire to points, and that's wire one. Let points two equal wire to points, points two, and let's see how we're doing so far. Okay, wonderful. So now for the interesting part. So the answer to this is going to be the intersection, which we can get the intersection using inter. And then we also have a function here, min element, not mint element, that's awesome. Min element. So to do this, we're gonna need to be able to do Manhattan distance and compare Manhattan distance from origin. So to start, let's actually just define Manhattan and 
this is gonna say like x equals x1, y equals y1. This is a point. I don't know how much these annotations are necessary. Um, x equals x2, y equals y2. This is a point. And this is the whole thing is gonna refer back an int. And basically, I mean, hot and distance is just to find, and you can find this anywhere online. And it makes sense if you logically think it through. Um, x1 minus x2, the absolute value, plus the absolute value of y1 minus y2. Okay, so now we can do Manhattan from origin is a fun one to do just for fun. So Manhattan from origin is just going to be Manhattan, <laughs> not mahogany. Whew. Okay, uh, point origin. So that's kind of pleasant. Oh, and I forgot my semicolon should go everywhere. Oh. Oh, I missed something important. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, my woes earlier, I wanna talk about those a little more. They came from this. So this is that thing that I was talking about that gens a bunch of code for the types. Um, I had to add in my Dune file, I had to add this preprocess, preprocessor Jane thing to actually use Jane Street's preprocessor. It just took me a long time to figure out that that was the exact incantation I needed to get this right. I tried like sticking hash require in my files, Jane, PPX Jane, and it blew up. I don't know what require means. I tried getting these things called oh, top level or utop or all these different tools and nothing ended up working. Um, in the end, I kind of just stumbled upon this preprocessor directive. I stumbled upon the fact that I need PPX. I saw something else do PPS. Um, so I kind of just guessed and got this. I haven't found this explicitly anywhere. This might be wrong, but it seemed to make things work. So I needed that to make this work. And that's why this video is sort of a recap of my old approach rather than the initial approach. So um, it's, it's just me just showing what I ended up doing more than anything else. Um, so let's just make sure it still compiles. Okay, it still compiles. So our intersection, actually let's just do let answer equal so this is going to be points one and I like the pipeline things sometimes it's a little silly like I think this is a little silly how I'm doing this because it's kind of arbitrary that I chose points one to go here but I should be able to enter points two see like I really okay it is arbitrary you know what? let's just do this that feels a little less arbitrary because now it's just everything's applied um, then we should be able to do hash set dot min and this is definitely not the most optimal way to do this I think it'd be more optimal to use a normal set um, Because I'm doing an intersection. I think that would be quicker and a min would probably be quicker too because I think sets tend to be stored as trees um, At least in ML kind of languages straight sets not hash sets They tend to be stored as trees which are really good usually at finding a min element um, I could be totally off base with that. I, I don't know um min element and min element takes compare and compare is really just um, compare dist from compare Manhattan from origin so we'll write that in a moment but anyways I think that's actually all we need as far as this goes um, one thing I will do here is I'll do just to get us to the actual answer so this is just going to return back the point, but the problem wants the, um, whatchamacallit, it wants the actual distance from origin. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an option.map, which I'm pretty sure is right. Um, module option, option, there we go. Map, find map, map. Okay, yeah, it's called F is the argument. Oh, that's cool. Looks like there's a little, uh, there's another shorthand for that, interesting. Um, but I should be able to say option not map because uh, find element returns an option. Um, Manhattan from origin. So that'll get the answer in the right form inside of the option. So let compare Manhattan from origin. Uh, this is just going to be, so it's gonna take point one and point two. And I'm just gonna do a compare Manhattan from origin point one and then um, Manhattan from origin point two. 
So that's how I'm doing that. Let's just make sure it still compiles. Sorry, I'm a little aggressive about these things, but I have an error, so I guess it's good to be aggressive sometimes. Oh, this one's not particularly hard. I just forgot my argument. That's still something I'm kind of getting used to, but to be honest with you, it is actually something I really like so far about this language. Um, okay. And then one thing you may have noticed when I first started solving these problems, I had to say let open paren close paren here. If you, were, if you had a keen eye, you noticed that it was different from last time, if you even watched that far in last time. Um, that was something that when I included the Jane Street pretty print, or not pretty printer, preprocessor, other PP, um, it required me to do. And it makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, the preprocessor expects certain things, and it didn't like top-level expressions. It wanted everything to be a def definition um, and to have things well-defined. So it just wants us to define that as a unit where applicable. So answer, oh, I forgot this. These have all my answers, so I'm actually gonna be a little more verbose here. Um, three part one result is this. Three part one result. And if we have some, some value, all right. If we have some value, that's the value we got back. Um, Unexpectedly couldn't find D D3 P1. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's run that. Hopefully I did everything right. Everything feels right. Um, I got 209 and if I look back to my problem, part two is a bigger number, but part one was 209. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I had an absolute blast solving this part. Um, given that things like this deriving exists. I didn't have to go and actually write these. Not that they're super hard to write. They're actually pretty si simple, especially for two value records like this. Um, given that things like this exist, this was super, super easy and quick. And I could definitely see myself using it. Um, it did take a lot of, I don't want to say a lot like in a bad way, but a lot of me just not knowing where to look. Um, it did take a while to figure out this, this uh, directive right here. But once I did, everything rolled along just fine, and I was able to code this out. Um, I didn't think I would say this in the, ever, but I actually really like this kind of local mutation pattern where you kind of just mutate things inside of the value. It's so much easier than in Haskell or F Sharp, where I would like return everything returns back a set and then everything does unions of unions of unions and in some ways it ends up feeling a little more precise actually like whenever i would go in haskell and do all those unions i would think to myself i wonder if i'm like calculating duplicate values here a lot and kind of just re-adding them to the list um this makes you think about that a little more and some of these structures even force you to handle a duplicate insert um, so I think that there's some real big benefits here, not to mention it's a hash set, you know, uh, it's quick to insert, it's quick to do checks. Of course, I'm not doing checks, I'm doing intersections, which isn't great. It's an, it's an N, O of N kind of operation. Um, but I do often want to just build one of these things up and just do quick tons of checks against it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really liking it. Um, I wouldn't say I like it more than Haskell, I wouldn't say I like it more than F-sharp, I wouldn't say I like it less in a lot of ways either though, so so far I'm liking it, it's fun, it's fast, um, and this real world OCaml book is very good. I will probably buy this once the second edition comes out, um, add it to my library and read through it just because OCaml seems to be an interesting language, it's, it's in an interesting place in the kind of ML language derived uh, hierarchy or spectrum or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, thanks for watching.